What did we learn about Trevor Penning on day one of OTAs? Ladies and gentlemen, woo, baby, a lot has been made about Trevor Penning and his move to right tackle. Former Saints first-round pick. Uh, didn't work out at left tackle, so now apparently he's moving to right tackle, and the question is, will that solve all of Trevor Penning's problems in this video, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to talk about that. I'll break it down, give you my thoughts. We're even going to read some Jeff Duncan tweets during this video, but what a treat we have here. You know, you know OTAs are here. You know training camp is here. You know mini camp is here. When you see Nick and when you see the New Orleans dot football gang out in the parking lot, roasting, sun, absolutely beaming, 140 degrees. When you see that, when you see citizens leaving their job in the background, going on their lunch break, smoking a cigarette, drinking a Mickey's. And if you don't know what a Mickey's is, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're living high on the hog. Because your boy right here used to drink quite a few Mickey's back in the day. But none of that matters. Not sure why I got on that tangent. Probably should have censored that, but we don't edit here on this channel. Nick, take it away. Members of the Saints coaching staff say the sky is the limit for Trevor Penning, but the way that picture is getting painted might come in reverse from what we previously expected. That was like a riddle. Okay, hold on. So the sky... Okay, hold on a second. The sky is getting painted in reverse. We're removing paint to expose the potential. Okay, I'm with you. I'm All Nick right. Underhill, and you're watching The Dot, presented by Matt Bowers Auto Group. In the Saints' first OTA of the summer, Trevor yes. Penning worked out on the right side of the line, and it's incredibly early, and there isn't any real hitting, and the action is kind of simulated in a way. But Penning didn't look bad there, and I think that is a good... All right, so here's the situation. So uh, let's just break it down. So Talise Fuaga, we covered this in a video. Talise Fuaga, Oos, a.k.a. member of the Bloodline. We acknowledge the Tribal Chief. Talise Fuaga is, was drafted, has played his entire career at on the right, all right, on the right tackle, on the right side of the line at Oregon State. At the beginning of Saints' career, they're moving him to the left. Now, I thought long and hard about this because, you know, I had, I mean, the amount of people, you know, ask me, James, give me your thoughts, give me your opinion on this, what, what, what's the situation? So I thought, I leaned back and I thought I laid and I meditated. And here's my initial reaction. If Clint Kubiak is coming from a system where it's very dependent on his offensive lineman being able to block or being able to provide in this wide zone run scheme that they do in, in San Fran. And then you think about Trent Williams in San Francisco, and you think about where how impactful he was. Maybe there's something to Clint Kubiak being comfortable with a certain type of player doing a certain type of thing at that position. All right. This isn't 1997. Okay. A left tackle isn't just Oh, yeah, they're important because it's the blind side. Like, that's, you know, no Sandra Bullock anymore, ladies and gentlemen. So maybe that's why he's shifting Fuaga. At the same time, I think it makes sense, if you're the coaching staff, to move Penning around and figure out what you can do with him. Right? It's not working at left tackle. So if you're trying out Fuaga at, le at left tackle, and you think, well, damn, he might be our next Trent Williams. He might be the next guy who can really be the key of this entire scheme if that's what you're doing with fuaga then yeah, okay yeah sure see if pinning can, can play on the right and if it looks better cool but i don't think moving him to the right is any like is anything crazy i don't, I don't think that's going to solve his problems i don't think it's going to fix this riddle i don't think this is going to be a whole different thing i think it's just like kind of a shot in the dark just kind of like a hail mary it's just well what are we going to do with him? We got we got Fuaga taking the snaps at left. What do y'all want to do with Penning? Somebody was probably like, I don't know, send, send him, let, let him go walk around or send him home. Who cares? And someone probably said, well, he's actually here, so let's just go ahead and put him on the right side. So that that's really all I think there is to it. Before we continue, though, with Nick, I did want to show y'all Jeff Duncan's tweet. So Jeff Duncan, his first look at the 2024 Saints uh, OTA or whatever, the switch of Trevor Penning to right tackle makes a lot of sense. Seems like a natural spot for him. You know what I think is a natural spot for him? Row seven selling honey roasted pecans. Okay. That at there has yet to be a natural spot in the NFL for Trevor Penning. And then if you go down a little further and you look at some of the some of the comments and whatnot, been saying for a while Penning will do better at right tackle. Reminded me how Pete failed at both right tackle and right guard before settling on the left. Some guys' muscle memory and coordination is just better suited for a different side. Then Duncan says, 
In addition to finding a fit for his skill set, I also think there's something to giving him a completely fresh start. New scheme, new staff, new position. Starting from scratch might be good for him. Yeah, and then next year when he fails at right tackle, we can try him at wide receiver. And then next year we can put him at safety. Because, hey, new start, new skill, whatever. It's a good for him. It's a, it's a completely fresh thing. After that happens, he can get up in the HR department and then he can start, and then he can move over to accounting, move over to finance. We'll just keep trying to find a fresh start. I mean, look, I want the guy to succeed, okay? I want the guy to succeed as much as the next person. But my God, I have never seen or heard so much being made about a late first round offensive lineman who hasn't worked out out of Northern Iowa. Like, I, I mean, I don't think I, I don't think David Carr got this much development in Houston. There's first overall picks. There's quarterbacks who haven't been given this much opportunity, this much of a chance, this much media coverage as Trevor Penning. I mean, move him to the right, move him to right tackle, whatever. Put him on the bench, whatever. Put him in the jumbo package, who cares? But, like, let's just kind of, let's focus on the important things here. Him moving from left to right, we don't need, you know, thesis. We, we, don't, we don't need 14-page case studies being written about this. They're just trying something out for a guy who failed miserably at a position. Step in the right direction. You can kind of judge the downsides of these things this time of year. And he looked like he knew what he was doing, even though everything he was doing was coming in reverse. So if Penning is able to settle in there, it could put Tali Fuaga on the left side, which we saw in rookie camp. And then the rest of the line can fill out around them with Eric. Well, I'm way more. Here's a good example of what I mean by let's focus on what's important. I am way more, way more interested in how Talise Fuaga is handling the left I'm way more interested to see how he is fitting in at left tackle than I'm interested in if Trevor Penny is finding a resurgence at right tackle. To me, you focus on that. If Talise Fuaga is like, man, left is sweet, this is awesome, and he's good there, yes, put him there and we'll figure out the rest. If Talise Fuaga is like, I don't know, man, I'm kind of I'm kind of figuring things out, it's kind of a doesn't really feel natural. I think I'd be better on the right. Get Trevor Penning the hell out of there. Our focus, the guy, is Talise Fuaga right now. Right? He was drafted by Clint Kubiak. He fits Clint Kubiak's scheme. We have to make him as comfortable as possible. That should be what we're focused on right now, not moving Trevor Penning every 40 minutes to figure out a position that he can exist at. McCoy in the middle, Cesar Ruiz on the right side, and left guard still a little bit up in the air. Nick Saldaveri worked out there today, so he might have first crack at that job, but we saw Shane Lemieux get some reps with the first team as well, so they are trying out some of their options there. But I And I think, like, you know, again, you got to remember, super early. Like, it's super, super early in the process. So, it's different, like NFL coverage or media coverage nowadays, and, and every single thing is going to be asked about or questioned or scrutinized or whatever. And, th and that just comes with more cameras being at practices and preseason and, and the huddles and all that stuff. Like, I'm sure a long time ago, there was all kinds of stuff that was tried out and it was just chalked up to trying stuff out, chalked up to OTAs, chalked up to you know early on in camp. I think that's what's happening here because it is a bit of a volatile situation with pinning. I think that's why you're hearing so much about it. But it's so early, guys. I mean, if, if yeah, if if as we continue and we see more of this and we see more of like, well, this has been it. Like this has been the offensive line we've seen for the last two and a half weeks at practice. We've seen pinning on the right, Fuaga on the left, Derek Carr's they're getting this is like the line with the first teamers. Like this is this is the the priority. Then okay. Then we can kind of deduce that this might be it. This might be what they're gonna do. But I think right now. They're just trying stuff out. They're just seeing what they have, which I'm all for. I, I think every player should do that. I mean, even like Taysom Hill. There was talk about Taysom Hill playing fullback today, and people were like, "Well, maybe, maybe the uh, maybe the 40 or maybe the Saints can use Taysom Hill like the 49ers used Kyle Uzcheck." And it's like, guys, y'all y'all realize that Kyle Uzcheck had like 15 targets last year. Like Taysom Hill had what 40 targets and 30 receptions. I don't think I don't think that Taysom Hill being used like Kyle Juszczyk would be huge for Taysom Hill's career. What would be huge for Taysom Hill's career is if they could use him like Taysom Hill. 
not try and transform him into Kyle Juszczyk, but that's a good example of how OTAs can kind of get lost where Taysom's taking snap, snaps at fullback, and all of a sudden now people are like, oh, he's a fullback, now he's going to be Kyle Juszczyk. When in reality, he's just, they're just seeing where he fits. They're just, you know, Clint Kubiak and Andrew Janoko and all the all the new offensive staff, they got a big box. When they showed up, they got a big box of puzzle pieces. And their job now is to see exactly where each one of those puzzle pi- puzzle pieces fit. That's all they're doing right now. They're just trying, is this fit here? Is this fit here? Can we use this here? Can we use this here? Is this an idea? Hey, I thought about this. Let's try it. Hey, I thought about this. Let's see what it looks like. That's, that's what's happening right now. A whole lot of, let's see what it looks like. And that's it. You know, like it's not just like the pinning thing. The pinning thing, if you listen to some reporters on, on some four-letter networks in New Orleans, if you listen to some reporters, they're acting like this pinning thing is the same thing as discovering penicillin or the same thing as discovering gravity. I guarantee you this pinning shift from left to right, I guarantee you it was created from a bunch of coaches in a room drinking coffee or whatever just kind of you know just kind of hanging out and then one of them probably said yeah let's what do y'all think pinning would look like on the right and another one of them said i don't know let's see what it looks like and that's it you know that's how this stuff is born this early i think if penning can settle in to that right side that would be a huge benefit for the team he would have his new home and if he can be on the field and he can play well that alleviates a lot of the issues the team is currently facing on the offensive line yeah, because he's a dead zone right now. I mean, he's a dead zone right now as a player and all that. Like, I mean, we saw it last year where he, he started. It was horrible. He was hurting the team. He got removed from the team. He got removed from not just starting on the offensive line, but jumbo packages and all that stuff. He was just a guy who, you know, they, could, they couldn't utilize. So, of course, if they find something and he can be utilized, which I'm rooting for, I'm rooting for it. I hope I hope so. If Trevor Penny moves to the right side and it's just a complete, like, man, whoa, hold on a second, I can do this, and he becomes a viable right tackle, and Talise Fuaga it becomes a really good left tackle, hell yeah, all of a sudden, that our, our biggest question mark is offensive line. If that happens, all of a sudden, that's a, that's, that's a fantastic outlook for the Saints. And I would say the same thing with pinning at right guard or left guard or center or wherever. If he can play a position with our big in our on our biggest question mark, that's just nothing but a positive. So we'll see how it goes. We'll keep monitoring the situation. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments below what you think about pinning's move from left tackle to right tackle. You think uh, it'll stick? Are you rooting for it to stick? You think Fuaga will end up on the left? Give me all those predictions down below. I'll see you in the next video.